Hey everyone, and welcome back to our Color Pie Philosophy series. In this video, we're going to talk about the strengths, weaknesses, motivations, and more of the Blue White Azorius color pair. Before we get into the nitty gritty, make sure you sign up for our Modern Masters 2015 Booster Box giveaway. All you have to do is subscribe to be entered to win. Anywhere in the world, we'll ship it right to you. So be sure to click the first link in the description, and if you can, join the professor and I at GP Vegas later this year. Now, if you've missed previous episodes of this series and you want to catch up, we've already studied both the Izzet and Golgari guilds. So be sure to check those out by clicking the links on the screen. Okay, without further ado, let's jump right in. To really explore what it means to be Azorius, we have to explore its individual parts. We can't really know what it means to be blue-white without looking under the hood. Let's begin with white. White is the color of order, of macro safety. The color is designed around a one-for-all complex. The individual is meaningless to the whole. All white ever does is try to make the world better for all of its inhabitants. Anyone or anything that subscribes to white's moral and ethical code will be protected by the color. The reason I'm pushing this point so hard is because that's literally what white is. Everything stems from the idea that the community is the number one priority. The ends justify the means 100% of the time if it protects the people. White's concrete morality is infamous for this. We see cards like Wrath of God or Path to Exile or Swords to Plowshares. These are straightforward, powerful, ruthless spells that represent White's dedication to protecting its own. If you choose to be part of this society, you must fall in line, you must look out for the greater good, you must sacrifice your individuality for the survival of all. As far as color depth goes, white is probably the most shallow, and that isn't a bad thing. It's because the color is so stubborn there's no room for movement, no room for internal review, growth, or change. The system that white has put into place is the system. It is the absolute best way to keep everyone alive. Because of this ironclad belief in the system, white is positive that it's better than everyone else. The color hoists itself up on a pedestal, always fighting on the side of righteousness and the ultimate good. According to White, it's never wrong. It never compromises its morals for anything, and while this insane close-mindedness may seem bad, it all comes from a place of good. White has the best of intentions. The color wants its people to prosper, be happy, live full lives. At the end of the day, here's what you need to know about White. The color values community over everything else and has spent an entirety mastering the best way to ensure the community's safety. If white is one of the more shallow colors, blue is one of the deepest. Above all else, blue desires perfection, perfection in everything, omniscience, omnipotence. The color wants it all. And because this idea is so abstract and far-reaching, it is reflected in everything that blue does. There's a level of cold detachment that comes from being blue. The goal is to manipulate, learn, push the boundaries. If there's something blue doesn't know, it has to know it no matter what. And it's that no matter what attitude that leads to the cold detachment. Blue isn't emotional. Blue doesn't cater to how you feel. Blue will do whatever it takes to gain more information, to fill in the blanks of the multiverse. To accomplish this goal, blue doesn't have time to care about the individual, or rules, or accepted beliefs. Blue lays out a strategy to learn what it wants to know, then learns it case closed. Now while Blue will most of the time prepare, strategize, and put forth a plan, it doesn't always. At the heart of Blue is a quiet desperation for knowledge. This frantic search for truth and information. This hunger that is never-ending. You see this expressed in Ludifex, the desperate need to gain knowledge at the expense of a part of yourself. In a way, Blue contradicts itself. It relies heavily on strategy and information gathering to see into the future, expect the unexpected, prepare for all scenarios. But in a way, it's always scrambling, always looking for the next little bit of inspiration. Anyways, it's these conflicting ideas that will help us connect White and Blue to create the Azorius Guild. White cares all about community. White knows what's best to keep everyone alive, happy, and the community thriving. White is positive it has it all figured out. But here's the thing, so does Blue. As a matter of fact, Blue is designed entirely around knowing everything. And this is our way in on the surface. White and Blue get along really well because they both have so much information, experience, and knowledge. They're like parents and everyone else, children. White and Blue have learned through research and experience how to run society correctly. So when we talk about how these allied colors come together, this sharing of mutual elitism is a good place to start, as ironic as that statement is. And this is why we see the Azorius Senate, the ruling class of Ravnica. This is why we see oppression in blue-white cards. When you take two colors that know they're right about everything and put them together, what did you think you were going to get? It's oppression born from good intentions, and that's where white and blue meet on a deeper level. Both of these colors want what's best for society. White wants the community to thrive, be strong, live forever. 
Blue also wants that. It wants to help gain knowledge and information to help the world, to help civilization conquer the unknown. And while the core beliefs of each color may differ, they both arrive at the same overarching idea. We know better than everyone else. Blue-white tends to govern everything it touches because the color combination represents the pinnacle of strategic thought. To see this color pair played out in the world merely like a Ravnica. Blue and white are both colors with a lot of experience and strategy and planning. Imagine putting the experience of white and the sheer intellect of blue together. Yeah, that's how we get here. That's why the Azoria Senate is so powerful. The laws that come out of it are so complicated that no one else could possibly understand what they mean besides the Azorius. Remember when you were younger and your parents used to tell you, I'll explain when you're older? This is just like that, except you never get smart enough to hear the explanation. What you need to know is this. The Azorius exist to create order and safety in a world of chaos and death. No two colors have more experience building civilizations or maintaining them. In every sense of the phrase, Azorius knows best. Literally. The strength of Azorius is singular in nature, control. There is no better control color combination in magic than blue-white. Blue helps keep the board clear, then white deals with whatever gets past blue. We've touched on it before, but oppression is the name of the game. When you're against a blue-white player, you should get the feeling that they're trying to dictate the pace of the game. They're trying to get you to play the game the way they want you to. They get to say yes or no, they get to remove your creatures or let them live. When you play against blue-white, you shouldn't feel good. You should feel like you're being taken for a ride, but you have no idea where you're going and you aren't allowed any input. This is why you need to destroy blue-white quickly. Because if the game goes too long, you'll lose the little control you had to begin with. Which leads us to our last section, weaknesses. Blue-white is slow, incredibly slow, clumsily slow. Obviously there are exceptions to this, but in the grand scheme of color pairs, blue-white is among the slowest, and here's why. Remember earlier in the video I talked about blue being frantic? This deep desperation from the color that contradicts everything it is on the outside? That surface is here. White and blue get along on a macro level, they both want the best for society. The problem? They don't get to that conclusion the same way. White believes in protecting community at all costs, and it is rigid in that belief. It will never sway from that position, but blue will. The only reason blue subscribes to the order that white imposes is because it helps blue further its research without a bunch of fuss. If it needs to experiment, it can do that. If it needs resources, people, anything, it can get them. In many ways, blue uses white for its subjugation of the masses. And underneath the surface relationship, there is a bit of unrest. White and blue separately have faster answers than they do together. Path to Exile and Unsummon are straightforward, efficient, clear-cut. They represent everything that is white and blue separately, but when you combine them, you force the two colors to coexist in a space they don't want to coexist in. Sure, they get along enough to control what you need to, but deep down they lose a little of what makes them strong for the sake of flexibility. Even when we're talking about allied color pairs, it doesn't have to be a harmonious relationship, it just has to be a mutually beneficial one. And the relationship between white and blue, certainly mutually beneficial. When it's all said and done and the chips are on the table, blue-white makes a solid color combination. One of the most infamous in magic. White brings its concrete morality and need for order. Blue brings its vast intellect and penchant for stratagem. When you put the two colors together, you get the most oppressive, powerful, and protected color pair in the history of magic. This is what happens when two colors share a singular focus. Make the world a better place, no matter what. If you take nothing else away from this, make sure you take this. The Azorius aren't evil, but their insane dedication to order and organized research makes them dangerous for free thought, free expression, and questioning of the status quo. There's nothing more dangerous to the Azorius than an individual with a name and an idea. To them, that's much worse than any number of guns or spellcasters. Ideas mean change, and if uncontrolled, change could be bad. Not worth the risk, never worth the risk. What do you think of our Azorius Color Pie Philosophy video? Is this about what you expected from the Azorius? Do you think of them any different now? Maybe understand a bit where they're coming from? The guild is annoying to most people, sure. But you kind of see where they're coming from a little bit, right? Sometimes protecting the greater good is important. Anywho, be sure to let me know what you think in the comments, and if you enjoy this series, be sure to leave which guild you'd like us to cover next down below. Just a reminder, we've already covered Is It and Golgari, so whatever is left, have at it. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. This video is brought to you in part by TCGPlayer.com. The Ether Revolt Pro Tour just happened and cards are more expensive than ever. Lucky for you, box prices are lower than ever. $89 will get you a sealed box of Ether Revolt delivered right to your door this very second. 
All you have to do is click the link on your screen and boom, cheap cards from reliable stores. Sounds good to me. Enjoy.